Week 11 starts and sits, thoughts on the trade deadline, and preparations for the fantasy playoffs. This is Keepers. Welcome to Keepers, I'm your host Matt Ufford, and with the weather changing, I desperately need new cardigans. Please send any new or gently used cardigans to me, care of Vox Media in New York City. I'm a men's medium, cool colors and earth tones preferred. Start Frank Gore. Last week, the 49ers got him 20 plus carries for the first time since week four, and look at that, 80 yards and a score. The old man gets it done when he gets the touches. This week, he gets a Giants defense that ranks last in rush yards allowed per game, yards per carry, and rushing touchdowns. And they're probably still nursing the wounds from the Seahawks battering them for 350 yards rushing and five touchdowns on the ground. Sit Michael Floyd. As if his season hasn't been disappointing enough, the Lions have the third best passing defense in the NFL and have surrendered a league low 10 touchdowns through the air. With Drew Stanton taking over under center, I'm lowering my expectations for all Cardinals receivers. A receiving Floyd I like, Malcolm Floyd. San Diego's leading receiver loves facing off against Oakland. In his last five games against the Raiders, he has 29 catches for almost 600 yards and four TDs. He should do well against a secondary that just lost DJ Hayden to injury yet again. Oh, poor Raiders. Sit Eddie Lacy. Lacy's having a subpar sophomore year and with Aaron Rodgers as sizzling hot as he is, look for Green Bay to mostly rely on the passing game against the Eagles. And when they do run, there may not be much room for him to work against a Philly D that's mostly bottled up Jonathan Stewart, D'Angelo Williams, Arian Foster, and Andre Ellington since their week seven bye. Start Travis Kelsey. With Cam Chancellor and Bobby Wagner injured, the Seahawks have struggled to contain tight ends who have scored 10 of the 15 passing touchdowns the Hawks have allowed. Only the Jets have allowed that many scores to tight ends, and they're the Jets. Considering no chief wide receiver has caught a touchdown this year, Kelsey's the best bet to get red zone looks. Sit Vernon Davis. Probably the bust of the year at his position. Since his terrific week one performance in Dallas, Davis is averaging less than two catches for 16 yards per game. Ooh. He has fewer fans points than Josh Hill. Who's Josh Hill? Exactly. Start Greg Jennings. He's really started to connect with Teddy Bridgewater, going for at least 75 yards or finding the end zone in each of his last three games. And the Vikings play an imploding Bears team that's giving up as many fantasy points to wide receivers as the Jets are. You ever notice how the Jets are my go-to comparison for something awful? I'm sorry, that's really Jets of me. Sit Sammy Watkins. Four things you need to know. Groin injury, on the road, short week, Brent Grimes. And Brent Grimes, or grimy as he liked to be called, taught us that a man can triumph over adversity. Go with the hot cornerback who enables Simpsons references. Week 10's recommendations were mostly good. I told you to start Brandon Cooks, Roddy White, and Denard Robinson, who all scored more than 13 standard fantasy points, and I said to sit Lamar Miller, who got shut down by the Lions. My only big misses? Recommending starts for Justin Hunter and Bobby Rainey. I'll admit I tried to go for bold picks and maybe I picked unreliable players and crappy offenses. But you know what? I don't bet on seven every time I roll the dice because this show would be super boring if I did. No regrets. With a trade deadline likely approaching in your league, you're probably weighing your options for making a stretch run versus stocking up on cheap young talent to save as keepers for next year. For our purposes here, I'm going to make recommendations for a one-off league. Buy low on Kenny Britt. The Rams only have one other wide receiver on their active roster with so much as 100 receiving yards on the year, so Britt will be a go-to option for, ugh, Sean Hill down the stretch. I know it sounds bad, but the Rams schedule softens the next few weeks. Sell high on Steven Jackson. Don't buy into his respectable performance over the last two games. He's still the same guy who averaged less than 50 yards from scrimmage over Atlanta's first seven games. Unfortunately, he doesn't get to play Tampa with two weeks of rest every time out. Huh, wouldn't that be nice? Buy low on Eli Manning. Before facing the Seahawks, Manning had gone over a month without throwing an interception. After this week's tough match against San Francisco, the Giants finished with a soft schedule. Jacksonville, Tennessee, Washington, St. Louis. If your present fantasy quarterback is a disappointment, look to Eli to get you through the playoffs. Sell high on Josh Gordon. Gordon was a world beater last year, but what's more likely? He continues to put up historic numbers despite a 10 month layoff, or he suffers some perfectly normal regression that will disappoint owners with huge expectations. As excited as I am to see Gordon back on the field, his value will be highest before he ever steps on the field. If I were headed for a playoff run, I'd try to swap him for a top three player at my weakest position. 
Hire Jordan Matthews and fire Ruben Randall. Matthews has clicked immediately with Mark Sanchez thanks to their developing chemistry on Philly's second unit. Three touchdowns and seven quarters later, Matthews is a must add. Drop Randall for him, who's had just one TD in his last seven games to go along with dwindling yardage production thanks to the emergence of his former LSU teammate, Odell Beckham Jr. Hire Michael Rivera and fire Jordan Cameron. Apparently all Rivera needed to get going was to no longer start. He started Oakland's first six games and barely cracked 100 yards total with no touchdowns. But since being removed from their starting lineup, he's caught 21 balls for 185 yards and three scores in just three games. Gotta love that garbage time production. As for Cameron, not much has gone his way this year. Whether it's been injuries or no longer playing in North Turner's offense, he's only had one good game all year. That is all for week 11 of Keepers. As always, thank you for watching. I'm very grateful for your time and that you have so much of it to waste with me. Set your lineups. See you next week.